The AMD 7900 XT and XTX are officially here. That means no more guessing, no more speculating, no more leaks, no more rumors, nothing like that. We now officially have performance numbers. We know exactly how these cards perform. I'm recording this on embargo day, which means you're watching it on launch day. And if everything goes according to plan, this video is going live and I'm on my way to Micro Center to hopefully get my hands on the 7900 XTX for MSRP. I'm not looking to pay any more than MSRP because honestly, the MSRP is already pushing it in terms of pricing to begin with. I definitely don't wanna pay more than that. Now, my goal for this video is to primarily focus on the 7900 XTX. And the reason why is because Quite frankly, the 7900 XT is overpriced for what you get. I think the 7900 XT should be no more than 799 and honestly, that's pushing it. If for some reason you're looking to buy a 7900 XT, I would recommend either waiting for the price to inevitably fall or just go ahead and put another $100 with it and buy the 7900 XTX because overall, that is the best bang for your dollar right now. Let's talk about the 7900 XTX. What were the expectations and what actually happened? Well, we all expected the 7900 XTX to be cheaper than the 4080 and to be faster than the 4080 in rasterization and to fall behind in ray tracing. And more or less, we are getting those things except the rasterization unfortunately is not a clear knockout victory here. Unfortunately, the 7900 XTX and the RTX 4080 trade blows in rasterization. And I'm gonna give you some examples here. If we look at TechSpot's 16 game average, we can see that at 1440p, the 4080 and the 7900 XTX are essentially the same. And at 4K, the gap does technically widen just a little bit, but it's only four frames. And let's be honest, no one is really going to notice that. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, at 1440p, the 7900 XTX absolutely obliterates in this benchmark. We're talking over 300 frames per second and it even outperforms the RTX 4090. And even at 4K, it's the exact same story. It still beats the 4090 and it still beats the 4080. Now hold up, I don't want you to get the wrong impression here. Yes, the 7900 XTX does perform quite well in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, but that is an outlier. Unfortunately, the rest of the games are not that great. The 4090 destroys a 7900 XTX across the board. I don't want you thinking the 7900 XTX is a 4090 competitor. It's not, it never was. The RTX 4080 is meant to go head to head with the 7900 XTX. And with that in mind, let's look at some more benchmarks. If we look at Hitman 3 at 1440p, we can see that the 4080 and 7900 XTX are neck and neck. They are essentially the same. This lines up with the 16 game average we saw at 1440p. And at 4K, we can see the 7900 XTX clearly outperforms the RTX 4080 by 21 frames on average. However, if we look at the Outer Worlds at 1440p ultra quality, we can see the 4080 is clearly ahead of the 7900 XTX even at 1440p. And at 4K, it's the exact same story. The RTX 4080 is ahead of the 7900 XTX. And it's the exact same story with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. At 1440p, the 4080 is ahead of the 7900 XTX. And at 4K, the gap widens even more. But switching things back around one final time, we can see that in Far Cry 6, we can see the 7900 XTX is the winner in both 1440p as well as 4K. Okay, so as you can see, these cards trade blows across the board. It really is a situation where if you're looking to buy one of these cards, you have to ask yourself, which game am I most interested in playing? Because depending on the game you're looking to play, the 4080 could be the better card or the 7900 XTX could be the better card. Now, one would say, well, logically speaking, if you have two cards that are basically the exact same in terms of rasterization, but one card is $200 cheaper, obviously save the money and get the card that is $200 cheaper, right? Okay, the first potential problem here is exactly what I talked about in my last video. I talked about the possibility that Nvidia could lower the price of the 4080. I know it is unlikely, but it is a possibility. Possibility. And if Nvidia does lower the price, then the main advantage that the 7900 XTX has completely goes out the window. Right now, the main advantage is the fact that it's $200 cheaper. But if both cars are priced exactly the same or closer in price, 
then the 7900 XTX becomes a little bit harder of a sell. But let's talk about something that is definitely more of a problem for AMD, and that is ray tracing. The 7900 XTX is significantly better in ray tracing than the previous generation of AMD GPUs. However, if you take 13 FPS on a GPU and ray tracing and you double it, which is a huge performance increase, that only comes out to be about 26 FPS in ray tracing, which is nothing to write home about at all. The 7900 XTX is better in ray tracing, but it still doesn't catch the 4080. As a whole, in general, across the board, the 4080 is better in ray tracing, and there are more problems than you might think outside of performance. Let's talk about it. Watch Dogs Legion is a clear example of a big problem for AMD. If you look at the 7900 XTX with ray tracing turned on, you're only averaging 44 frames per second. Again, if you compare that to the previous generation AMD flagship at 29 frames per second, that is technically a nice performance increase. However, if you compare it to the 3090 Ti, you can see we have an exact match, 44 frames per second. But if you compare it to the 4080, you can see it falls behind on average by about 10 frames. The bigger problem comes in though, when you consider upscaling. Not only is DLSS typically considered to be better than FSR, but FSR is not even even supported in Watch Dogs Legion. So literally the 44 frames per second that you see on the screen right now is the best you can get out of the 7900 XTX. Meanwhile, if you get the 4080, not only do you start off higher at 54 frames per second, but you can also enable DLSS and get a massive performance increase. You can see with the DLSS quality preset, we have 89 frames per second on average in ray tracing with the 4080. Now look, I understand the count counter argument here is, well, hey, that is one game you're cherry picking. Most games do support FSR if it supports DLSS. Okay, fair. Let's look at another title. In Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, we can see that in ray tracing, the 7900 XTX averages 53 frames per second, which is very close to a playable 60 FPS. And if you compare it to the 4080, it falls behind even more because the 4080 averages 72 FPS. Now, this is a game that does support both FSR and DLSS. And as you can see, if you enable FSR, the frame rate does take a nice jump all the way up to 78 frames per second. However, when you enable DLSS quality on the 4080, you can see the frame rate jumps up to 116 frames per second. I'm not taking shots at AMD or anything like that, but Nvidia, at least for now, is clearly better at ray tracing and upscaling technologies. DLSS is better than FSR. And even if FSR was somehow better than DLSS, AMD has decided to make it open source and allows it to work on any GPU possible. And that includes Nvidia's cards. Whereas Nvidia has locked down DLSS and they have made it exclusive to their cards. So when you buy the 7900 XTX, you only have access to FSR. But if you buy the 4080, you have access to FSR and DLSS. And so going back to my original proposition, what happens if Nvidia lowers the price of the 4080? Well, if that were to happen, the 7900 XTX is a much harder sell at that point because not only are both cards coming closer in price and not only are they already about the same in rasterization, but you're getting better upscaling technologies, more upscaling technologies, and you're getting better ray tracing on the Nvidia card, unfortunately. AMD is supposed to be launching FSR3 sometime in 2023 and it's supposed to be a lot better than FSR2 and it's supposed to bring frame generation to match NVIDIA's DLSS 3's frame generation. And I'm incredibly excited for that, and I hope it's amazing. The problem is we don't have a definitive release date on it. And the other problem is every new piece of technology will launch with bugs and it will need some type of improving after it launches. By the time FSR 3 gets here, DLSS 3 will have already been on the market for several months. And so NVIDIA will be ahead in terms of refining it and making it better. So I have high hopes for FSR 3, but I know it's going to be a long road. Now, look, it's not all bad. There's another chart here on TechSpot's website where it talks about cost per frame. And basically, it breaks down the value of the overall GPU. So the first situation is launch MSRP of all the cards. And this has the 3070, 60. 
6800 XT, 6800, 3080, and the list goes on and on. And as you can see at the very top of this list is a 7900 XTX. This means at $1,000, when you compare it to all the previous generation GPUs, 7900 XTX is the best bang for buck. It is offering the best value across the board. You're getting more performance per dollar spent and that is totally awesome. And the second situation that it accounts for is current pricing according to Newegg. And as you can see, the 7900 XTX does fall down a couple of spots, but it's only in third place, which is still not bad. It is still way ahead of many other GPUs being sold on the market today with today's pricing. And lastly, there is one pretty big problem here, and that is total power consumption. The 40 series cards, unfortunately, are more efficient than the 7900 XTX. I know the 7900 XTX in some cases is actually drawing over 100 watts just idle on the desktop, not even doing anything. That is very bad, unfortunately. And so I'm really hoping that AMD can get that under control sometime after launch. Now look, overall, the performance here is actually not that bad on the 7900 XTX. Actually, it's quite good. The problem is that AMD made it seem like at a minimum, we would get a 50% performance increase. And at a maximum, we would get up to 70% of a performance increase over the 6950 XT. And if those numbers were true, we would actually see a bigger difference between the 4080 and the 7900 XTX. AMD made it seem like at a minimum, we would see a 50% performance increase across the board. And we don't see that. Actually, on average, the 7900 XTX is only about 35% faster than the 6950 XT at 4K. That's nice, but it's not 50 to 70%. How important is ray tracing to you? That's really what it comes down to. If ray tracing does not matter to you at all, save yourself the $200, buy the 7900 XTX. If ray tracing does matter to you, buy the 4080, but don't buy the 4080 at $1,200 because it is a terrible buy at $1,200. I'm absolutely confident if you're willing to wait, you'll be able to get it at a cheaper price. Maybe that means the video lowers the price. Maybe that means you buy it secondhand or you find it open box at a retail store. The fact remains, if you wait, I'm confident you'll be able to get it at a cheaper price. Do not buy the 4080 at $1,200. If ray tracing matters to you, get the 4080. If it doesn't matter to you, get the 7900 XTX. If you like this video, hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. Let me know in the comment section, are you getting a 7900 XTX or were you disappointed in the performance numbers? Let me know. And until next time, E-Rock out.